Just give me, just give me one moment. <laughs> okay. Uh, now I'm all better. All right. It is now seven o'clock. We're just going to go ahead and get this uh, get this party started. Uh, purpose of this video is that we are going to be making one gallon of pear wine, or let me rephrase that. We are going to start the process of making one gallon of pear wine. It won't be ready for a year, but at least we'll get that party started. Uh, just to let me know how many people I've got online right now, if you just go ahead and uh, just uh, give me a quick hello. Uh, while you're doing that, the uh, the uh, I guess the uh, procedure I'm going to use for this live stream is going to be uh, get some few housekeeping tasks out of the way first. Then we're going to go ahead and get started on making the wine to be. And then we'll open it up for question and answer. Uh, and a lot of that could probably be, uh, since this is, uh, I've just celebrated my one year anniversary of being a, a YouTuber, a uh, a social influencer. <laughs> we can talk about the trials and tribulations of being uh, being a YouTuber. So uh, again, if you just go ahead and uh, just give me a quick shout out, let me know you're there. Uh, number say I've got six of you there, but I'd like to know who it is that I'm talking to. So I'll give you a second to do that. Let's see, juice, sugar, yeast, primary ingredients for making wine. Okay, Lonnie, appreciate you uh, stepping up, being one of the first. I don't think I need glasses, quite honestly. Um, to begin, I'd like to give a quick shout out to uh, two people. One, uh, we've got a new member that uh, is helping to support this channel, uh, David Liebman. Thank you very much for that, appreciate it. And I received a uh, $10 donation from a uh, Cynthia Abel. I'm sorry, a Claudia Abel. My bad. I appreciate that. Just to let you know where your money went. Uh, it did go towards the purchase of a new uh, tube for uh, my hydrometer. And I had a little bit left over to buy one out of the three new, uh, new uh, <laughs> airlocks for the, uh, for, for, for the wines that I've got on, on hand. Uh, I do again appreciate that. Uh, it's a small channel, doesn't make very much. So uh, again, thank you very much. Uh, Lutheran, again, I think I've got... Uh, I've already thanked, uh, did thank you already for that. Uh, Legendary Drew, wouldn't be a party without Drew. Uh, let's see, Sue, Sue, thank you from Southeast Arizona. All right. Uh, Christos, Chrysalis, hello, thank you, hello. Bobby, hey, pear wine, I'm going to try my first batch. What do you mean first batch failed you? We want to talk about why it went wrong so that... I don't make the same mistakes. And uh, Joseph, loving your content. Thank you very much. All right. A couple of other things. One, uh, purpose of this channel. The purpose of uh, DIY fermentation is really very simple. It's to show you how you can start the process of learning how to make wine. Uh, the wines that I make here are very, very simple. Uh, they may not be technically correct because I'm not using a lot of uh, additives uh, in my wines. Uh, if I can get away with just uh, juice, sugar, and yeast, uh, I will do so. Uh, I will use substitutes where available. For instance, uh, this lemon that we're going to be adding to this particular wine is a substitute for uh, citrus blend. Uh, you may see me from time to time using tea as a substitute for tannin or wood chips as a substitute for tannin. Uh, in this particular wine, this particular tea, this is mine. <laughs> okay, This is not going to go in the wine. Uh, beyond that, all you really have need is just uh, something to do for primary fermentation in. Uh, airlock, if you've got it, would be great. And again, a hydrometer to let you know just the potential alcohol level of your wine uh, to be. It also helps you adjust the amount of sugar going into the wine at first so that you can, instead of having to rely on a recipe that says uh, we're going to add two cups of sugar, you can uh, start with a cup Mix in your juice, take a hydrometer reading, see where it level lies, see how much more sugar you need to add to get it to up to a level that you want for the type of wine that you want to make. Uh, that will probably be a separate video for another day. 
Uh, we probably will not, in fact I know we're not going to be taking a, drum, a hydrometer reading uh, during this video, although I will take one uh, uh, after the video and I'll have that posted online. Also, the ingredients that I post online generally, uh, if there are going to be any changes to the recipe, they're going to show up in the comment section where I have the ingredients listed. Also, during the six month tasting, when I give this wine a taste, and at six months, no, it's not really ready, but it kind of gives you an idea of what's happening with the wine. I'll let you know in the comment section that uh, perhaps uh, the addition of the lemon juice was not a good idea or could have started out with a little bit more sugar, you know, things along those lines, just to let you know what's going on. Uh, super chats and super stickers are available also. Uh, again, uh, with uh, David, who became a new member, uh, the seventh member that I have so far. Uh, the more the merrier. Appreciate that. Uh, it does help to support this channel. Uh, let's see. Before I really get started here, uh, Zane Lewis, Zane from Alberta, a Canadian. All right. Used to live in Detroit. So, <laughs> Detroit being south of the border was just. A trip across the river so we used to go there quite a bit um bobby he's okay private conversation please feel free i'm not really going to get started until i've tasted my tea which is unsweetened black organic lipton tea by the way they're not a sponsor or anything this is what i've now kind of settled into as my tea of choice mm. ah. okay now we are just going to, one moment, dog stump, howdy, <laughs> howdy back. <laughs> All right, for the purposes of uh, the, uh, the uh, replays or the, uh, uh, what is the word I want to use, uh, uh, later on down the road, for people who just want to see how to make the wine, we're just going to go ahead and get started doing that and pretty much get that out the way. And of course, if you've seen any of my other wine videos, uh, uh, live streams, you know that, except for that coconut wine, that was kind of involved. Uh, generally, I will pick something that's juice already in a, in a, in a container. You're not going to see me uh, grinding up or slicing up or, or mixing up any, any, any berries or pears or apples or whatnot, because time just does not permit for that. Uh, and I don't want to do really, really much anything ahead of time. I want you to see the entire process. So if you're new to the process, again, wine making is really very simple. Primary ingredients, juice, sugar, and yeast. <laughs> That's all it is. And uh, yes, if you don't have wine yeast, you can use bread yeast. It's not as good, but it will still work. Okay, Connie Swiner, hey for Chicago. <laughs> it's kind of cold up there. That's why I moved down south. <laughs> um... BR, hi from Florida. Thank you for your videos. You're welcome. Uh, again, as I said uh, kind of earlier, just to repeat, uh, I've completed my first year of uh, being uh, having this channel. Uh, to date, I've got, uh, in fact, I'm going to get an exact number here. To date, I've got, no, I won't because it'll change the screen. Or can I? I can. Let me try this. I hope I won't mess this up. Let's see what happens. Da, 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 da. To date, I have exactly 2,774 subscribers. Thank you all very much for taking a chance and subscribing to my channel. Um, I didn't think I'd have this many at, at the one year mark. I'm glad that I do. Uh, looking forward to the next mark, which is 10,000. But uh, that won't be for at least another year. <laughs> Uh, currently growing at a rate of uh, just over 500, more than 500, about 550 subscribers per month, new subscribers per month. So that's where that stands there. Let me get back to my go live screen here. Da -da -da -da, stream, so I can see myself. Oh, can't do that. That's what I love about YouTube. Let's see. I want to go here, and I want to go here. I want to go here. And I want to go to Create. And go live. This one. Let 
Well, I see the comments. There we go. I don't know if I disappeared on your screen or not. Hope I didn't. If I did, I won't be doing that again <laughs> anytime soon. All right, uh, Eric, I'm uh, just going to go up from there. I hope so. Uh, probably won't be doing the same pace of videos that I've been doing. Uh, more than likely, I'm going to probably cut back to once a week for a while. In fact, I just took a week off uh, because I needed a break. It wasn't so much of a week off. I did a video showing me or showing my daughter how I make my pizzas from scratch. So I won't count that as a video. You won't see that one online. Uh, it's a private video between my, 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 me and my daughter and maybe my son later on. But again, before I get off too far off the point, read this last comment and I'm going to get started. Uh, good morning from Japan. Seriously. All right. Got that global reach. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Sample my blackberry cider. There's an idea. Uh, with my last girl, with my girlfriend, <laughs> not last girlfriend, but with my girlfriend last night, she liked it and took a bottle home with her. Um, I'm glad to hear that. That's good. Um, I got into a very early habit of, uh, of, of sharing some of my early creations uh, before they were actually fully mature, usually before the six month mark, uh, which were kind of sort of drinkable but um once people realize that you're making wine you, you, you'd be amazed how many friends you get <laughs> okay all right we move this and we're going to get started the actual process of making wine is really very quick i mean five six minutes and you're basically done <laughs> except for the 12 month waiting that you'll have to do before it's finally ready and then there are the periodic rackings every six to eight weeks and then there's the bottling the degassing well i mean yeah there's some other things that will need to be done but as far as getting started we're talking about five minutes to go ahead and get that done so let's go ahead and get that done first thing we want to do is to make mention of the fact that before i did anything uh all bottles and jars and funnels and knives, whatever. They've all been uh, sanitized using uh, star sands. Uh, recently did a, vi a video on sanitization. So if you don't have star sands, there are other methods that you can use to sanitize your, your equipment uh, that doesn't involve you going into your pocket and, and paying somebody for, for an easy method of getting it done for you. Oh, what am I doing? So again, this is all done beforehand. Um, all I need to do at this point is to Take a funnel. Go ahead and open up one of our bottles of juice. And before I do that, using uh, uh, bottle juices or canned juices, uh, they've all been pasteurized. Really, they've all been sanitized. You don't have to worry about a lot of things that uh, some people will, will if they're using fresh fruit, they'll, they'll first thing they'll suggest is that you need to use canning tablets to help sterilize the fruit to get rid of uh, any existing bacteria or any existing uh, yeast that you don't want in your in your uh, final, uh, your wine product. Uh, really, all that's been done for you. So all you need to do is just open the cap, making sure I got a convenient towel close by, which I don't. So I'm going to try a little bit more careful with this time, and pour in your juice. All right, now I'm only going to put in one bottle of juice at this time. That was what mistake I made. Oh, I have to go with it. Is that I'm going to pour in my sugar and then I'm going to shake this up. And the reason why I don't want to put in both uh, both bottles of, of juice is because this thing can get kind of heavy. <laughs> right? And I don't really need both bottles to be able to mix up the sugar in the juice. So we're going to go ahead and Add our sugar, which was two cups of sugar, by the way. Which, when you're not really sure about how much sugar you should add, usually if you're making a one gallon batch, it's generally about two cups of sugar that you're going to start with. Because the fruit itself is going to have its own sugar. And the more sugar you start with, the higher potential alcohol level you're going to have. And what I want to do now at this point is just go ahead and 
it's just going to dissolve that sugar. And while I'm doing that, let's see if I can read some of these questions here. Uh, da, 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 da. Well, Penny, good afternoon. Well, good evening here in the Carolinas. Uh, Eric, uh, my fiance and I just made, made your orange wine recipe. Can't wait for the final results. Never knew juicing the oranges was such a workout. <laughs> this is that one scene after I've uh, uh, zested all of those oranges. I, you, you've seen the reaction on my face when I, when I finally finished that last orange. Uh, I'm surprised. That's actually my most popular video. Uh, David, love to see another mead step by step. Uh, still indeterminate about what kind of a mead I want to make the next time around. I still have uh, still have uh, three pounds of honey that uh, uh, a friend of mine uh, gave me for uh, uh, as a gift and made. Uh, what did I make with that? I made that. Uh, was that the lemon or the orange? I think it was the orange mead that I made out of that. Oh, it was the orange mead. It was the uh, uh, mandarin orange mead. Uh, we're still waiting on her to come up with a suggestion as to what I could make with that uh, last uh, last batch of honey that she gave me. It does not appear as if no no is online tonight. But yeah, you'll see me making another mead. I take a minute. Well, I'm waiting for that to dissolve. Uh, in terms of memberships, uh, a lot of people are trying, are having problems trying to access the uh, join button. Yeah, accessing the join button uh, from a mobile device, your cell phone, or whatnot. Uh, it's pretty simple from uh, from a desktop or a laptop. Uh, but if you've got a mobile device and you're watching the video in, in landscape mode and you don't see the join or the uh, subscribe buttons below uh, the video, just, just rotate your device <laughs> to minimize the screen and then you'll see the, uh, the all of the joins and the, and the memberships and all the comments below. That's all you need to do. Uh, cherry and apple go well together. Uh, for cherry... I'm going to wait. If I'm going to do another mead, I think I'm going to use, uh, well, for, if I'm going to use cherry for anything, I'm going to wait for cherry season to come around. Uh, the only cherries that I can get frozen are the dark cherries, which I like. And I have several, a uh, couple of recipes or batches that are currently going uh, with the dark cherries right now. Uh, but I'm going to wait, uh, wait till the fruit becomes in season. Do a lot more fresh fruits uh, as opposed to, um, uh, juices and uh, and frozen fruits, at least for a while. Um, yeah, at least for a while. What are we doing here? Yeah, this is dissolved. So all I need to do at this point is go ahead and add the rest of our juice. stop about here for two reasons uh, I'm, I'm not going to fill it up to the top for two reasons one uh, during primary fermentation uh, the yeast uh, actually makes a good use of the uh, oxygen that's 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 currently in your juice uh, so actually giving it a shake for the first three days or so uh, to just mix in some more oxygen is actually a good thing also sometimes when you're making your wines and meads Especially with meads. Meads have a tendency to uh, kind of bubble up <laughs> during primary fermentation. And sometimes it will bubble up all the way and out your airlock. So you have to be mindful of that fact. Um, so no, uh, having a good amount of headspace during primary is, is a good thing. During secondary, you pretty much want to try and fill it up all the way. Uh, I've got a gallon's worth of juice 
in bottles, but this is a four liter container. Jug, carboy, Demi John, take your pick. Uh, so it wouldn't fill it up to be uh, uh, all the way anyway. And usually like what I, I can either add more juice or, or water just to bring it up to the top level during secondary fermentation. Uh, primary, secondary fermentation. Uh, primary fermentation, about a week. And then you would rack it, especially if you're using fruit, uh, you would then rack it into, sec into your secondary fermentation container uh, to get rid of all of that uh, fruit that you've got uh, either floating in the container or sitting in a, uh, in a, uh, a bag because uh, it's done its work. And you can pretty much just discard that uh, however you see fit. Uh, let's see. Well, let's see. Let me catch up on some comments here. Um, okay, legendary Drew managed to save my overly sweet berry wine. <laughs> Mixed it with one to one very dry cider. That works. Uh, I think that's uh, a follow on to the uh, uh, blackberry wine that I made, uh, following the, the recipe exactly where it specified four, uh, four pounds of sugar. When it should have been four cups of sugar, so I ended up with a very, very overly sweet and very potent wine uh, that I ended up having to uh, to water down just to just to just to make it look a lot more like wine and a little bit less like a thin syrup. But it ended up being pretty tasty. Uh, I'm gonna end up doing that one again uh, with the modifications. Uh, let's see, what do we need to do now? We need to add our citrus blend substitute which is the juice of half a lemon move that off to the side move that off to the side Not going to be using tannin with this particular recipe. Pears actually have a fair amount of tannin in and of themselves. However, I don't really think I need it for this. So we'll just go ahead and add our uh, add our lemon juice. Lemon juice brings a, a brightness to the wine. It, it, it when I first started, before I finally learned why people were adding citrus blends, uh, either a citrus blend or, or adding uh, the juice of a lemon. Uh, without it, the wine has a has more of a flat flavor to it, or just it just tastes flat. Uh, simply adding a little bit of lemon juice or citrus blend kind of brightens up the wine quite a bit. So it's, it's, it's more tasty, <laughs> quite honestly, in my opinion. Uh, beyond that, that was about it. Uh, the only thing you need to do to turn your sweetened pear juice into wine is that you need to add your yeast. Now again, if you don't have regular wine yeast, you can use the original regular Fleischmann's yeast, not the insert, not the rapid rise, not the pizza, not the pizza uh, version of, of the yeast, but the, just the normal plain Jane version of it. And you should be okay. Now I'm going to add a quarter of a teaspoon, which is all you really need. I mean, if you want to bloom it first, you can. You don't really need to, but if you want to do that, you can. Uh, I've not had any problems with getting the yeast started just by simply uh, pouring it in the uh, in the container and calling it a day. I mean, if you want to shake it up, you can. You don't have to. And all you need to do is, at that point, uh, put in your airlock and stopper and call it a day. Now. Usually before adding the yeast is when you would want to pour off a little bit and take your hydrometer reading. But we're not going to be doing that because I want to keep this one as simple as possible. Uh, again, the hydrometer reading will be listed uh, in the uh, uh, with the ingredients uh, in the comment section when the YouTube finishes processing this video and uh, it puts it online. Uh, what I want to do now is take my airlock or stopper. It's got the appropriate level of water in it. Insert said stopper into the uh, into the hole, and that's that. For the next uh, three to five days, or at least the next three days, for certainly, I'll just go ahead and uh, more than likely, uh, I'll just take off the airlock, put the cap back on, give it a good 
quick little shake uh, to get some more oxygen in there. And that would be that. After three days, I don't, generally I don't do that anymore because it's not necessary. Uh, usually after a day, you'll start seeing uh, activity, uh, uh, CO2 being produced, alcohol being produced, uh, CO2 pushing itself up and through your airlock, and uh, there you go. Uh, again, in about uh, four to six weeks, you're going to start seeing um, uh, a layer of sediment on the bottom of your container. Jug, carboy, demijohn. And, uh, and then that's when you know it's pretty much time to rack your wine, which is basically just siphoning off everything above that uh, dead lease layer or dead yeast layer and uh, putting it in another container and letting uh, secondary fermentation continue on from there uh, up until the point where your wine becomes clear and uh, it's been long enough where you think your wine is, is ready so you can go ahead and bottle it uh, and then subsequently later on start drinking it. Let me get this off the way. And that's the process for making wine. Uh, it's the same process whether you're using pear juice, apple juice, which is the cheapest wine you can actually make, uh, well, it's grape juice or, or any other type of juice, and that is the process. It takes about that long to, to go ahead and get the process started. Uh, let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Those degrees of the wall are in brewing <laughs> and theoretical man making. No, it's not. Uh, Again, this channel is one year old. I started making my first uh, experimental wine one year ago. I'm about as much of a novice as you guys are. Uh, the purpose of this channel, again, was to uh, show novices how another novice starts out making wine. And I keep it at a very simple level. You're not going to see me using, uh, uh, you're not going to see me doing kit wines. You're not going to see me using, uh, 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 sulfites or, uh, or clearing agents or a lot of the things that if you, if you really are getting into winemaking, you might want to move into, uh, to make your wine a better wine. I mean, this is going to taste, this is going to taste okay. But then again, this is just at a very basic starter level. And that's where I'm going to keep this channel at a very, very basic starter level. Uh, I think one time I tried to, uh, uh, advance the channel by showing more advanced techniques as I, as I learned them. And started getting comments from some of my users, subscribers, people just stopping by, saying that uh, things had gotten a little bit too complex for them. They wanted something simple, and pretty much that's where I kept it, and that's where I intend to keep it. So when I do get those comments from uh, more advanced winemakers saying, well, you should do this and you should do that, I'm not mad at you. I'm just simply saying that for this particular channel, that's not the direction I'm going to go in. I'm going to keep it at a very, very simple level, just that for people who are not in the know, I just want to give it a quick try. This is how you can do it. Uh, Lonnie, uh, with real fruit, did you say keep it three days? No, with real fruit, uh, generally I will keep it, uh, uh, in the, uh, in the, uh, uh, fermenter for about five days. Uh, and depending on the fruit, anywhere from five to seven days. Uh, after that, it's pretty much done its thing. Uh, and you can pretty much discard it after that. If you're just using juice, well, it doesn't matter. Uh, you would simply just shake it for the first three days. With fresh fruit, you would still give it a stir uh, to incorporate some more oxygen in that first three days. But uh, again, you would leave it in the uh, in the container for at least five days uh, to make sure that uh, all of the juice that you're going to get, the flavor you're going to get out of those out of that fresh fruit, has been extracted. And you'll see that uh, at the end of that five days, the fruit is basically mush, okay? It won't have much semblance to what it was initially. So uh, just just bear in mind that sometimes it's going to look, uh, well, it's going to look, uh, how can I say it politely, but it, it will not look pleasant. <laughs> but the flavor that it has imparted will be well worth it. Uh, Michael, respect it. Okay. One moment. All right, before we move on, were there any questions about the process? Uh, for you newbies out there who haven't started making wine before, that is basically the process. Everything else is just, uh, it's just an additive, an addition, an embellishment uh, to make a better wine than, than what you've got going here. What's your opinion about bentonite clay? 
Um, I don't use it, and I have no plans on using it. And quite honestly, uh, bentonite clay is used uh, to help clarify your wine. Uh, it, from what I've seen, it works. Uh, like I say, I have nothing against it, but again, another way of clearing your wine is time. I mean, you really don't want to be drinking your wine. I mean, you can, and I frequently do, uh, but you really don't want to be drinking your wine uh, for at least a year anyway. Uh, and during that period of time, your wine is going to just naturally clear. Uh, but if you're in a hurry and you want to bottle it quicker, not that you can drink it any quicker, but if you're just in that kind of a hurry, then bentonite clay uh, uh, will do the trick. Uh, or gelatin. Again, same thing. Uh, I won't get into those processes because for the novice winemaker, uh, just to be able to do this first is probably more important than to be able to do something uh, better with it uh, later on down the road. And I've seen that. I actually tried the egg whites once uh, when I first made my, my, my batch of uh, strawberry wine because uh, it, was, it wasn't clearing enough. Oh, that's... I wish I brought that. Uh, if I'm dealing with a fruit, egg whites were kind of, it's kind of strange. The jury's still out on that one. <laughs> I don't know. I might do that one as, a, as, as, a, as an experiment. I might do a video on that as an experiment, but I don't know about that one. Uh, uh, I was going to say that uh, uh, pectin enzyme, uh, if you're dealing with fruit that does have a lot of pectin, uh, which will almost keep your wine from going clear almost forever, seems like, uh, does help a lot. Uh, you may have seen me using it in, in, in a number of my videos. Uh, normally I try not to use it, uh, uh, but when I know that <laughs> having tried it, <laughs> having known that it works, I'll usually go with it uh, when I can. Uh, it won't, it's not necessary for, for wines like this. Uh, but I, uh, I am making strawberry wine. I haven't tried using pectin enzyme with, with my needs yet. I'm just kind of curious to see how they're going to clear up there on their own. Uh, but we'll see how that goes. I'm just simply saying that uh, that's my one sheet. I will use pectin enzyme because... <laughs> it's just, so I just don't have the luxury of time most of the time. Um, uh, I only have a limited number of these. And I need to use these uh, kind of rapidly when I'm, when I'm doing this channel. I just can't let wine sit in this in these any, uh, for any longer than, than I have to usually. Well, now it's up to six to seven months. So it, I've got enough of these where it's getting better. But when I was starting out uh, a few months back and only had like a half a dozen of these, uh, I didn't have the luxury of time to wait for the wine to clear. I had to use, I had to use uh, uh, pectin enzyme for certain types of wine, uh, fresh fruit wines. Uh, so I'm just saying, you know. Um, which I just talked about. Uh, okay, uh, what is your favorite fruit wine? It uh, it was apple. It's apple still kind of is. Uh, I I've learned how to make apple a, a sparkling wine, uh, which made it even better. But if I still have a a, a favorite above that. I would probably say it was the uh, dark cherry wine. Kind of curious to see how that dark cherry mead's going to turn out. But uh, yeah, the dark cherry wine uh, uh, is actually now my new favorite. Uh, I, I know what it tastes like at the six month tasting. It was actually fairly decent, but uh, uh, I think at one year, uh, at the one year mark, it's actually going to be a very, very good wine. So yeah, dark cherry. Uh, hard, is it hard uh, jelly fermenters? Uh, well, you don't have very many and you have to do, a, for a channel like this, where you have to do a, a number of wines uh, per month, yeah. <laughs> uh, huge, pain in, huge pain in the butt. Uh, all of my fermenters, well, with the exception of my, uh, my uh, uh, Brew Demon fermenter, which you've seen me use, the big tall one the with the wide mouth, I'm not going to grab it because it's sitting right over there, empty. Uh, yeah, all of my other fermenters, these are recycled uh, wine, wine jugs. Uh, Carlo Rossi, $14.95 at Walmart. Uh, I mean, yeah, you have to drink the stuff that's in it, but it's almost as cheap as going to Walmart and getting a one-gallon uh, jug uh, off from them. Uh, I think it's more cost-effective for me to do it that way. Uh, besides, Walmart for me is like walking distance, like right down the street, quite honestly. Um, yeah, my daughter finally... <clears throat> <laughs> 
about time. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I'm glad you stopped by. Uh, yeah, your dad's doing another live stream. Yeah. <laughs> so, there you go. <laughs> uh, Ronnie, uh, just ask because I'm new to this and looking at recipes. Where did, I missed the first part of that. Ronnie, uh, oh, uh, for the fruit. For, for. Well, if you're just getting started, really, uh, I would probably recommend going with uh, just the apple wine. Uh, because you can get a gallon of, you can get a uh, half a gallon container of, uh, of apple juice from Walmart for 99 cents. So for $2, you've basically got uh, all of the juice you need to make a gallon of wine. All you're really doing is just adding uh, adding two cups of sugar and a quarter teaspoon of yeast. And, you know, <laughs> you're off to the races as far as getting your winemaking hobby started. Uh, yeah, I remember back when I first started... Again, apart from the Wilson's grape juice wine and the, uh, the Munich like the apples, and a lot of those wines were basically nothing but a memory after about six weeks. Okay, that's that, that's that's about the lifespan of the bottle from start to start to to finish. You know, six weeks. Uh, but it was also during that period of time when I realized that there's an awful lot of uh, there's like this thick layer of uh, of, of yeast sludge at the bottom of my wine glass and you know after quickly after a period of time you get tired of looking at that and you begin realizing that well if i just let it sit a little longer a lot of some of that more more of that will simply settle out and then longer more of that will settle out so i ended up doing a video about waiting for wine and it's kind of like uh, letting you know that you just have to wait for it if you wait for it long enough this will as clear as this is now this is what it will be you know six seven months from now it'll be it'll be that clear you just have to wait for it uh, and that's the, really the hardest part about uh, the winemaking process is that you just got to wait for it. I mean, if you want it to taste good and you want it to look good, then yeah, just wait it out. Um, let's see. Uh, Bobby, uh, okay, it's between you two. Uh, Chocolate Rose 34, what do you think is the best way to store your brewing equipment? Your brewing equipment? The best way? I don't know. I might be the wrong person to ask. Because uh, when my stuff is done, I just chuck it in a box <laughs> and call it a day. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the ferment is and, and whatnot. I mean, yeah, they'll get washed. At, when, when they're done with it, I'll wash them out, and then I'll give them uh, a Star Sands uh, rinsing uh, at first, put the cap on it, put it away. And then when I'm ready to use it again, I'll just pull it out uh, to take the cap off and 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 uh, uh, give it another uh, rinsing of star stands before I use it. Uh, but as far as my my tools, my, my turkey baster, my uh, my uh, uh, wine corker, hydrometer, tube, I mean, all those just go in a box. <laughs> it's actually sitting in a, in, a, in a corner of my bedroom and, until next time I need it, and that's where that goes. As far as my... Uh, 18 um, batches that I currently have going uh, those are sitting in a closet uh, it, it, it used to be a utility closet but I've got that space freed up where they're now just sitting on the floor in the closet uh, because it's a better control uh, temperature controlled environment and uh, every now and again I'll just go in and look and look at it to make sure things are you know proceeding normally or whether or not I need to rack uh, uh, rack them or not and basically that's it uh, I don't have a special room or a special uh, 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 like a junk drawer for <laughs> for my equipment um, Duluth uh, I have to drop off enjoyed the show glad you stopped by thank you very much uh, and congratulations to your first anniversary ah yeah need to talk about what it's like to uh, run a YouTube channel uh, for some of the members, well, the secondary members, they have access to um, uh, to my outtakes and uh, what I've got, my setup for my YouTube, uh, how I do my YouTube channels. But basically, uh, for those not in the know, it's uh, uh, the dining room table has now become my uh, preferred place of, of, of doing the videos. I used to do the, on the, on the uh, living room sofa, but uh, this is just simpler. I've got uh, two box, soft box lights on either side. I've got a tripod. I've got my cell phone as my uh, as my camera. My uh, computer is off on the side. It's a desktop. Uh, uh, I've got blankets, towels, pillows, clothes, <laughs> everything else I can put in here to help deaden some of the sound so you can get better sound quality. 
uh, just this little sliver of what you see is probably the only place where I've got room to work. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, well, I have uh, room to, uh, to uh, put on these demonstrations, uh, which is why you see me doing, a, basically most of my videos now are being done right here. Uh, it's just simpler. I it's, it's gotten to the point where I don't have, when I'm doing a video instead of a live stream, I don't have the blankets and towels and all of that. Uh, I'll just have the lights and the tripod, but uh, uh, I use a junk. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> uh, but yeah, for the most part, you really don't need all of this. I mean, if you want to start your own channel and it's really not that hard, uh, just break out your cell phone and just turn it around. Just think of it as doing a selfie. Uh, as far as, you know, talking to the camera, I mean, there's nobody here but me, so uh, you get used to the fact that you're having a conversation with your camera. If you, if you, if you can accept the fact that talking to yourself is not a sign of, of, of craziness, but it's an okay thing, <laughs> and you can actually make money doing it, <laughs> you're on your road to, to, to fame and fortune. <laughs> uh, yep. Um, oh, that's what I wanted to do. I wonder if I can do this without messing this up. When I first started out and I had like nothing but no viewers whatsoever, my growth chart, if I can do this, look like it probably won't work. I don't know if you can see that. It looked like that. Let's see if this works. There's like a 20 second delay. So if this pops up in 20 seconds, I know, I'll know that uh, I can do this. Otherwise, I'll have to research how I can have inserts using this uh, OBS software that I'm using for live streaming. Ah, it does work. Okay. Yeah, that's my growth chart. And down towards the end, back in February of last year, I mean, we're talking about one, maybe two viewers for <laughs> what, February, March, April, May, June. <laughs> July <laughs> for the first four to five months there was like you know nobody watching my stuff you, you go on you go on uh, YouTube and you talk uh, type in uh, wine making in, in the search bar uh, you'd never see my stuff <laughs> you scroll screen after screen after screen of, of, of thumbnails and my stuff was nowhere to be seen at least now it'll pop up every now and then you know closer towards the top but yeah it takes a while uh, so if you are planning on starting a, a YouTube channel, you just got to accept the fact that uh, for a while, <laughs> nobody's going to know who you are. <laughs> I'm really going to care, you know, so you just have to stick with it. So let me see if I can get this back. I'm glad that worked. I couldn't get that other part to work. So I want to turn on that one. Yeah. And turn off that one. Yeah. I'm glad that worked. Another thing that I've learned during that uh during that one year is that you got to have you got to start planning some of your stuff out uh my first what 10 months i didn't have a plan <laughs> basically it's whatever whatever would come to mind during that week i would then uh, uh start doing the research on, on videos and trying for uh, or recipes and try and find out something that uh i could make work i can simplify uh, uh to the point where anybody could do it you know but after a while, and there was one day for certain when I was trying to do, um, I was going to do a, 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 a wine tasting video. Actually, I'd already done it, but I didn't think that video was going to be all that great. Uh, so that day, that afternoon, I woke up at like 11 o'clock that day and decided, you know what, let me, let me go do something else. And I quickly came up with the idea of doing the um, apple cider, uh, apple cider uh, video and did that as a one day video. Uh, won't be doing that ever again because that was like, why, why am I working that hard? So I ended up coming up with a uh, content calendar. Let's see if I can make this work. Content, okay. And I want to turn that off. So for, at least for the next uh, next month or two, uh, I could put uh, my ideas off on the, on the right hand side and then uh, slowly plug those in on, on on a particular date. So at least I'll have ideas in the mix uh, and more coming. It's just that this was kind of like an earlier draft of what's going on uh, so that I could plan this a lot more in advance. So 
I'm just throwing that out there to say that, uh, yeah, it, it pays to do a little bit of planning. Uh, I don't script any of my, uh, any of my videos. I might have to do some research like, uh, the one I'm doing, I actually started doing the video editing, uh, well, started the filming of one called, uh, Jug Demijohn and Carboy. I told some of you, a few of you that I was going to do that video. Well, I actually started doing it, uh, Ended up finally getting three of these uh, uh, jugs free. So still working on that one. I put that off when I decided to take a break. Uh, but I'm just letting you know that uh, it is coming. It's there. It's doable. <laughs> it's being done. Uh, I might have it ready for... Uh, no, I'm not going to do it for Wednesday. I'm still taking Wednesdays off. I might do it for next Saturday uh, as a Saturday video. And then maybe after that next Saturday, I might start doing... Uh, more weekend or more Wednesday videos, but uh, yeah, one good thing about being uh, being retired is that I don't have to work, <laughs> and I certainly don't have to work hard. So <laughs> when I decide it's time for a break, it's time for a break. One moment. Uh, let's see, Chocolate Rose thirty four. Thank you for your work and learning experiences. Love time. I'm new to brewing and I found a hobby more complex, more complex than I thought and love it. It's not that hard. Well, it can be. <laughs> it's not like any other hobby. It can be as hard as you want it to be. Um, but again, if you can, once you've got the basics down pat, uh, it's really not that hard. Uh, let's see. What else? More questions. Uh, let's see. I don't see no no. She's not here today. She'll probably catch it on reruns. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's see. Still got another twelve minutes, folks. I mean, we're pretty much going to end this one on time a one hour video. I know sometimes these have a tendency to go on a bit. So, uh, looks like, uh, looks like things are going pretty light tonight. Uh, again, this is, this is my time for you. If you have questions, go for it. Otherwise I'm going to sit here and drink tea. <laughs> Well, let's see. What else about this channel? Yeah, uh, subscribers. YouTube's uh, YouTube's requirement for uh, channel monetization. There's not a lot of money in it, by the way. Uh, One thousand subscribers, and you've got to have your videos watched for a total of uh, four thousand hours. Uh, the more videos you've got, of course, the more times people are going to watch it. Live streams help because you've got uh, uh, a one-hour audience right there. Like right now, I've got what, 13, uh, 13 people or sets of eyeballs on this particular video at the moment. Uh, it's a one-hour video, so that would have been like 13 hours. There was a time when every little hour would count. Uh, every subscriber still counts, even though I've got over 27 or 2,700 of you now. Uh, If you're just starting out, then the only thing I can say is don't worry about the numbers. Uh, don't worry about uh, trying to start YouTube as a, as a, as a, as a big money maker because uh, the last statistics that I looked at, uh, less than 20% of all YouTubers are ever going to monetize the, uh, uh, reach the requirements to monetize their channels. Uh, and some, most of the time, those that do will take anywhere from two to three years before that happens. I just got, I just picked the, uh, a, a category that uh, people were interested in. So I managed to do mine in less than nine months. Uh, but I will say mine is an exception. I would simply say that uh, uh, you really aren't doing it for the money. You're just doing it uh, for yourself. Uh, if anybody's curious as to what uh, what kind of money that uh, having 27,000, <laughs> I wish, <laughs> I want, I want 27,000 subscribers, um, of having 2,700 subscribers makes, uh, 
again if your channel is monetized uh, you're not looking at hundreds of dollars you're you're looking at let's just say a number between one and two hundred <laughs> it's closer to the 150 mark <laughs> on a good month so you're really not doing it for the money uh, if you've got a channel where you're uh, 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 vlogging yourself where you, your, your, your costs are like non-existing just walking around talking about events of the day it doesn't cost you anything uh, that's great uh, if you're in a channel where you've got to uh, periodically make stuff <laughs> i mean you got to go to the store and buy stuff uh, uh, it's gonna it's gonna come out of your pocket and you just have to accept the fact that uh, until you make it <laughs> it's just something that's just gonna you just have to eat the cost and, and be done with it right now my channel is just breaking even uh in terms of the cost uh, which is why i generally look forward to uh uh, to memberships and super chats, super stickers, and all of that. Donations, of course, helps. I've already thanked uh, uh, Claudia for her donation. Uh, again, Claudia, uh, your donation helped me to get a replacement tube and also one of the three airlocks. I just want to repeat that again. Uh, new members like David uh, Liebman, again, thank you once again. Uh, the primary membership, uh, again, helps out quite a bit. Uh, it's things like that, the little things like that that... Uh, that, that keeps you going. Um, it lets, at least it lets you know that people appreciate your work uh, quite a bit, which actually a lot of people do thank me for my my, my, uh, my videos. I mean, they're okay. <laughs> you know, I, uh, as far as videos go, I mean, I don't really have the big production values that uh, some of the other YouTubers may have, but uh, I mean, it's, it's a start. It's just a start. It's only one year. Uh, let me catch up here. Uh, Connie, uh, I tried the basic mead and noticed that today after three what, weeks in primary, stuff looks like mold. Should I toss it? Not after three weeks. You're not going to see mold. More than likely after three weeks. Uh, you may have noticed that if it looks like, like, like it's bubbly uh, on the surface or it looks like it's bubbled up quite a bit, it's probably not mold. Mold is going to take a little bit longer than that. Uh, let me see. Bear with me one second. mead that I did, my orange mead, and I'm going to try and get this up close to the camera. Um, did this one last month on the 20th, and I don't know how this is going to look because I don't have, can I do this, that 20 second delay that I don't have here. I mean, you can see that there's a lot of foam, and there's a lot of bubbling on top, and although it's kind of bright on your end, I mean, that is okay. That is okay. Now, if you've got something that looks a little different than that, if it looks like uh, if it's dark, <laughs> I don't know, depending on the, on the wine, uh, mead that you're making, uh, if, it, if it, I mean, it does look like, uh, I don't know why I keep thinking black mold keeps, black mold keeps coming to mind, but, um, no, I mean, um, my apple mead and my uh, uh, strawberry mead pretty much did the same thing. My regular mead didn't really do that, but uh, the fruit meads kind of kind of did uh, have a lot of the bubbling and uh, what looks like a little bit of foam across the top. This one actually needs to be racked, as a matter of fact, because you can't see it. But I've got it like a fingers finger length uh, layer of sediment on the bottom. Yeah, it's about time to rack this one into another container. But again, mold, hmm, might be a bit soon for mold after only three weeks. I mean, if you properly sanitized your equipment, you really shouldn't have that as a problem. Look dark. Hmm. All right, there we go. But if it's green, then yeah, <laughs> green is not a good color. <laughs> Uh, 
This started raspberry wine and next up blueberry wine. Did the blueberry. Actually, not too bad. Very tasty. Uh, you're a great inspiration. Thank you, Connie. I see it, but it looked dark. What, my? This looked dark or, or yours looked dark? You already indicated that yours looked dark before. Uh, it's still bubbling. Okay. I mean, it's only been a few weeks, a few months been okay you know that's kind of like a different story but uh in a few weeks i'm not should be that bad again proper sanitation is key in fact what are you using to sanitize your equipment uh your your, your jugs and all of that are you using star sands or are you using um one step or are you using uh any of the other uh, uh other methods like uh like bleach or uh I'm trying to remember all the ones in that video i just did uh the uh, the oven method or the uh, the boiling method. I mean, uh, how are you sanitizing your equipment? Just asking. Um, hmm. Yeah, mold does look like real fuzzy. I mean, mold look. I mean, if you can think of like a uh, a piece of stale bread that's, that that looks moldy, you know, the green type of mold. Uh, you pretty much know what mold looks like. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but if it's just, like I said again, if it's just foamy, uh, some residue across the top, or, you know, I wouldn't be too concerned about that. Um, yeah, you're right. If you see fuzzy, yeah, you're right. I agree with you, Dog Stum. If it's fuzzy, then it's, it, uh, I don't know about that one. I, I, would, I would have my doubts. Uh, one good thing about most wines especially the store-bought juice versions of it is that if something does go wrong, I mean, you're not really out of out much money at all. I think the sugar would probably be more expensive, but uh, with meads, yeah, honey is still relatively expensive. Uh, so, yeah, I would be a little concerned myself if something were just out of the ordinary. But so far, it depends on the color and if it's fuzzy or not. Uh, that's all I can say there. Uh, I've considered uh, beet wine. No, I have not considered beet wine. Uh, started one three weeks ago, and it's pretty sweet and earthy for, at the same time. Not sure what to expect. That's which is probably why I have not done a beet wine because I'm not too sure what to expect. Also started a bland B L A A N D. I don't know. I don't know what that is. Uh, I will examine in more detail tomorrow. Please do. Uh, thank everyone for their advice. Well, I'm glad that this channel can do that. I mean, there are some people out there who know how to make wine. I mean, they might be slumming by checking out my channel, <laughs> you know, see, seeing how the other half does it. But uh, if they have some advice, again, uh, even with the uh, comment section in my uh, in my all of my other videos, I have not. I have no problems with anyone who, if one of the other uh, 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 commenters has a question jump right in and if it's something more advanced I have no problems with that at all uh, if you want to offer that level of, vi of advice uh, but again just be mindful of the fact that uh, uh, when you're directing that advice to me <laughs> I will let you know in so many words that uh, uh, this, uh, my intent is to keep this channel as simple as possible in terms of me tell uh, showing other people how to do it uh, more advanced techniques is probably best left up for another channel. But again, if you have a, if, a, if, a, if someone leaves a comment and they want to know how to do wines a certain way or what are the directions that they can go in and you wish to uh, chime in with a, a, a more advanced adv advice, I have no problems with that at all. Uh, cucumber wine. Okay. Uh, there are a lot of wines out there and uh, the quick glimpse of my uh, content calendar. I mean, uh, ideas. I have no problems with that at all. But again, I still am trying to work through a lot of uh, more uh, uh, customary wines uh, at first, at least this first or at least going into the second year. Uh, someone made reference to, uh, again, a watermelon wine. Uh, which I had, reserva I had reservations about that kombucha too, but uh, um, 
now that I've tried uh, the kombucha, kombucha, uh, I have no problems with it. Still trying to keep my scobies alive. Um, but yeah, uh, the watermelon wine, I, I'm going to wait till, till fruit uh, like that comes into season before I start giving those a try. Uh, I'm certainly not going to buy watermelon. <laughs> Not this time of year. I looked at the prices and it's like, I don't think so. Uh, looked at a dragon fruit uh, at the store last time I went. You know, it's kind of like you picked it up, looked at it. The hell is this? Mm, dragon fruit. Damn, how much? And kind of put it back. Uh, I mean, I'm not adverse to, <laughs> to trying new things uh, when the price is right. But again, uh, uh, Fermentation on a shoestring budget, which is my motto for, you know, we say it at the beginning of every channel. That, when I came up with that uh, motto, that was more, in, well, more, uh, how can I say, uh, that was more in, re in reference to my pocket, <laughs> okay, because I don't have any money. <laughs> so if I don't have any money, then there's got to be a lot of other people out there that don't really have a lot of money to be spending on, on, on new hobbies like how to make wine, at least not, uh, say, kit wines or, or, you know, uh, more traditional wines um, uh, so that was more of the impetus for this sort of thing um, uh, Blaine is from fermented whey byproduct of milk well whey I understand but making a wine from that okay I will google it just to get an idea <laughs> okay <laughs> Uh, oh, 8 o'clock. Was going to keep this short. Don't need this anymore. Yep, uh, the 20th. It's only been about three weeks or so. Well, almost four weeks. And you can see it's still uh, secondary fermentation. Need to rack it, but fermentation is still ongoing. It'll be doing that for a while. Like I said, it does need to be racked. Uh, I will probably do that uh, later on this, uh, later next week, uh, to get that out the way. I've got three others that need to be racked as well. Uh, more questions, or otherwise we're going to go ahead and uh, kind of uh, keep this one short and wrap it up. Uh, hey there, John. Uh, looking to do a pear vanilla wine. Would you use a John, I'm going to say this because I've seen uh, sometimes questions come up uh, about making, um, very, well, no, no, it's finally showed up. We're about to wrap this up knowing, thinking you were not going to be here. But John, um, you have to understand, uh, I don't have like years and years and years of winemaking experience trying out umpteen different styles of recipes. Uh, a lot of the wines you see me making on this channel are first time efforts. First time I've done it. Uh, this pear wine, first time I've done that. This uh, this orange mead, uh, first time doing that. Everything I've made with the exception of the apple wines and now that second batch of strawberry. Uh, anything you see me doing it, it's generally done on the first time. So yeah, there's a lot of trial and error. Uh, again, like I say, uh, a lot of the mistakes that I make or a lot of corrections that need to be made uh, usually will, will come up or show up during the uh, six month tastings and then I'll make comments or changes to the original uh, uh, ingredients uh, in the original video uh, and then I'll probably end up doing the same thing during the one year but uh, when you're asking when you ask me uh, should you do this with regards to something that I have not made before I'm not going to know uh, whether or not uh, uh, it's a good idea to do this or if it's a good idea to do that now granted after one year of making wines I have a greater understanding about uh, how some of these wines are made and yeah I can I can chime in uh, with regards to offering advice at that point, but uh, uh, if it's like again with the uh, uh, pear vanilla wine, it's probably probably pretty tasty. I mean, it sounds real good, <laughs> quite frankly. But again, I don't know what this tastes like yet uh, to be able to say. Well, if you start adding vanilla, and my advice would be always use vanilla beans as opposed to uh, vanilla extract, um, just to keep the. It's just going to be better. Period. Uh, but I'm really not going to know. And if I don't know, I'm going to let you know that I don't know. Simple as that. Uh, no, you haven't missed everything. 
I had only talked about you once, but I, it was, you know, that was about, you know, twice. But you didn't miss much. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> In terms of making the wines, I mean, if you've seen, you've seen my other wines, this was just like making the, um, the, the grape juice or the apple or, uh, the other, the other wines in terms of process. Um, that's how that went. Um, John, just looking at you, th just looking for your thoughts. Uh, I'm starting out just like you think. That I will say this, John. It's uh, it's all about uh, again trial and error. Uh, uh, just like when I started out and started I was drinking my wine after only four to six weeks, uh, it, the, 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 you quickly begin learning that if you just wait around a little bit longer, the wine ends up being ends up being a little bit better. And uh, uh, over time, you begin really re uh, realizing that you can't wait a full year and your wine is going to taste a heck of a lot better than it did at four to six weeks. Uh, but yeah, uh, throwing out ideas is great. Uh, I'm not going to know the answers to a lot of these questions because I just don't know. Uh, but I'll be up front and I'll let you know. Hey, I don't know. Um, Jackie Rose, I uh, love your channel. Please keep doing what you do. Yeah, hope. God willing, yeah. I get my two COVID shots, yeah. <laughs> so I can go outside from time to time. Uh, then, yeah, hopefully. Thank you. Michael, stupid question. There are no stupid questions. Stupid answers, but no stupid questions. Uh, can you make wine from soda or pop with real sugar? Um, Michael, the only thing I can say about that is um, you would have to check to see if um, uh, the soda makes use of any kind of preservatives, uh, which is usually kind of like the limiting factor because preservatives inhibits the, uh, the growth of the yeast, which is what you need to you know, turn water into wine sort of thing. Uh, so that's what you really look, are looking for there. Uh, I mean, if it, it's, I mean, for the most part, the sugar is there, the water is there, the flavor is there. Uh, there's not really a whole lot in the way of nutrients uh, beyond that for the yeast to take advantage of. Uh, so I guess it would kind of depend on on the strength of the yeast that you're using. Um, this uh, wine yeast that I'm using, the uh, Red Star. Uh, Coute des Blanc, Premier Coute des Blanc. Um, it's a very low to alcohol tolerance level. I think it tops out at like about 14% AVB or alcohol by volume. Uh, you, most of the earlier videos uh, that I was doing, uh, I was using a much more stronger, which is not in the bag. Uh, it's a Red Star Premier Blanc, uh, which tops out at about 18% AVB. And that's usually my... Uh, uh, yeast of choice when I'm dealing with something that I know it's got kind of an, an acidic uh, environment or if I just don't know uh, if the yeast are going to have enough nutrients. Uh, some of my earlier videos you saw me using raisins as a yeast nutrient. Uh, it's not really a yeast nutrient, I'll, I'll admit to that now. Uh, it doesn't hurt, it does provide a tiny little bit of nutrients. Um, and periodically, I'll just throw some reasons in just to be on the safe side uh, as a yeast nutrient. Uh, but I don't really want to start using products like uh, GoFirm or, uh, or uh, can't think of the other uh, yeast nutrients that are out there. Um, uh, because I'm trying to keep my uh, wines as additive free as, as possible. But so far, I've not really had any problems with uh, stuck fermentations uh, with the uh, yeast that I had been using. Uh, Generally, they've been stronger variants of yeast, which uh, have worked out quite well. So as long as the, the yeast are happy uh, with the environment that I'm giving them, uh, without having to use uh, yeast nutrients or, or yeast uh, uh, I forgot what it was called, but without having to add uh, additional support for the yeast, then that's what I'll do. Uh, again, the principle of this channel is that uh, if you can find it at the grocery store, uh, you can pretty much find it in your wine. Uh, the only the only caveat is that I would go with wine yeast versus uh, bread yeast. But like I said before, bread yeast does work. So if you want to make wine, if you're just trying to start it out for the first time, hey, bread yeast is what you've got. Then bread yeast is what you can use. As long as the original version of Fleischmann, not the instant rapid rise, not the pizza version of the yeast, but the regular plain Jane version, uh, it, it will work. 
thank you, John. I couldn't remember that dap for, for the life of me. Well, I don't use it, so <laughs> it wasn't on the top of my mind, but thank you very much for that, uh, for throwing that one in. Again, these products are, uh, you'll see when you're looking at recipes online, you'll see these listed regularly. It's like, uh, it's just like um, uh, if you're going to add, uh, if you're going to add juice, then you, you need to add uh, a yeast energizer or, or yeast nutrient. You, I mean, you'll see that and you, you can find substitutes again for, for most of the stuff that you're putting in there. I mean, like I say, acid, uh, acid blend uh, is really nothing more than um, lemon juice. Uh, uh, I gotta write that down. I actually looked at the three uh, blends of acid, citric acid that are in an acid blend. Uh, I know citric acid, tartaric acid, and there was other, uh, I think another acid uh, that's in there, which basically are all variations of, of, of using lemon juice to uh, uh, provide acidity to your wine. Um, diamonium phosphate. Now, if you've got, if it sounds like a chemistry experiment, that's why you won't find it <laughs> in my wines. <laughs> If you can find it at the grocery store, <laughs> maybe, but, uh, <laughs> but thank you for that. Uh, I never had to blow off, I had to go to a blow off tube when brewing and trying that. Huh. Which then goes back to the original search that I made earlier. Uh, this is just a start. There are other ways of making a better wine. Uh, and using these additives, yeah, you can probably make a better wine. Uh, but again, this is still going to be wine. Just like this is still going to be wine. Actually, this is actually, actually after, uh, f uh, when you're first starting out with your first batch of wine, usually by the end of the first week, uh, about 70% of the alcohol that your wine is capable of producing has been produced. So, I mean, technically you can call it wine. I won't say technically because wine is generally uh, has an AVV of at least 10%, uh, but at least 70% of the alcohol that your wine is going to produce is usually done by the end of that, uh, that first week, certainly by the first week or two. Um, okay, I, though I am extremely pro-nutrients, I will say that if given a choice between using no nutrients at all or, or using DAP, I would prefer no nutrients. Hmm. I am going to continue on with the no nutrient tack uh, up until I run into a batch of wine that, quite frankly, has a problem, doesn't make it. And probably we'll do a video on that particular batch of wine, uh, showing that what could happen and then what I can do uh, to get around it. I actually talked about using, um, uh, I think I need to do a, a, a dedicated video on stuck fermentation. I think it's in my idea list on my uh, content calendar. Uh, but I haven't had a stuck fermentation yet uh, to use as an example. Uh, stuck fermentation means that uh, uh, for whatever reason, you're not seeing any activity in your, your airlock uh, and it's too soon for you not to be seeing any activity in your airlock and you don't really see much happening. You don't really see a lot of uh, any, any CO2 bubbles coming up when uh, during that period of time it sh you should be seeing <laughs> bubbles coming up. Uh, you take a hydrometer reading and, um, and you take another hydrometer reading uh, maybe a day or so after that. And if there's no change and it's too soon for your fermentation to be complete, <laughs> then you know you got a problem <laughs> uh, with a stuck fermentation. So I'm still waiting on, on, on one of my wines to do that uh, so I can do a video on that. Uh, da -da 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 -da. John, agree, yeast may go slow, but it will happen. This is true. It's pretty much the reason for yeast nutrients. Uh, 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 to give the yeast uh, a little something more to work with uh, besides the uh, sugar and the oxygen that uh, you've, you initially put into it. Um, yeah, it might stress out the yeast a little bit, but uh, even stressed out yeast will, will work itself out uh, for the most part. Uh, thank you, Lonnie. Dropping, thank you for stopping in, Lonnie. Appreciate it. Until the next one. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Melody also DAP will not work if the ABB of a brew is over 9% already. Well, by then, I mean, there's no need for DAP. I mean, the yeast is pretty much done its bit for the most part. Uh, 
you're now into malolactic uh, fermentation, just waiting for the uh, 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 malic acid to, to transfer or, or convert into lactic acid to give your wine, take your wine from having that harsh taste to it, which you see me saying on almost every one of my six month tastings. The wine that's got, doesn't have that harshness, which is now, you know, your wine is now done, which is why I'm looking forward to my one year uh, tastings. Um, let's see. Uh, chocolate rose, a natural fermentation, no additives, no care. Yeah, uh, you're right. In fact, a natural fermentation, you're not really, you're not using, um, you're not using wine yeast at all. You're not using yeast at all, uh, or store bought yeast. You're pretty much, uh, using whatever yeast that happened to have been on, on the fruit that's left over or whatever happens to be in the air. I mean, that's, that's truly a natural fermentation there. Um, I'm still working out the mechanics of trying to do a batch with natural fermentation. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting for a fruit to become in, to get in season before I do that. Uh, I've looked at some of the videos where I can do a uh, uh, kind of a yeast starter uh, uh, for wines uh, using uh, uh, grapes. I've seen one using grapes. I've seen one using raisins. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm not ready to do that video yet. Probably sometime later in the spring. I might want to give that one a try. Uh, to actually doing wine from <laughs> quite naturally, naturally. Um, can you substitute fresh grapes for yeast? Fresh grapes for yeast? Yeah, this is in the same line with what I was just saying because uh, uh, there is yeast on the uh, on the skins of grapes. Uh, it is a natural yeast, uh, but I'm not quite sure how fermentation is going to work. I, I'm sure it probably will work. Uh, but I kind of like to do a video on that just to, just to see for myself how that's going to work out before I start saying that, uh, uh, this is a, a suggested method uh, for you to go ahead and try. You can go ahead and try it. Let me know how it works out, uh, before I do my video, but, uh, that's not going to be for another few months. Uh, I do have want to say that Fermate O and Brewing Yeast are extremely identical in how and where they're made. Okay. Bella P. Uh, both were made in labs. Yep. Uh, Patrice, uh, your videos are great. Thank you. Uh, you inspired me to make my own mead and wine. Circle back around it to that. Uh, how can I clear my mead faster? Uh, I've racked it three times and at least it's, and at least it's still at the bottom. I'm not clear. Well, three months is still kind of early. Quite honestly, uh, six months would be more more likely uh, before your wine starts to really starts to get clear. I'm not going to get up and go get my uh, my original mead, which is about six months old. Uh, yes, I am. This, bear with me a second. I'm going to grab uh, I'm going to grab my original mead. Before going on, I will simply say this. When you don't have enough of these, <laughs> okay, you find yourself, because you're running short of equipment and supplies, using these. These will work. However, this is my original apple mead. Started on the 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 1, 2, well, it's five months old. Okay. In terms of clarity, I mean, side by side. It's not as clear as, say, for instance, this. It's still got a haze to it. It's not six months old. If I can get this closer to the screen. I mean, it's still got haze to it. Very little sediment on the bottom. But again, which means I don't need to rack it yet. But again, um, if I could last rack this. Five weeks ago, 29th, January. Yeah. 
But yeah, it takes time. I mean, it does take time. I mean, we're talking about, I wish I hadn't done that. <laughs> it just stirred up some of the sediment at the bottom. And I intend to rack this in this week. I mean, uh, this one is being, uh, what, three weeks old? I mean, clearly, it's still cloudy. I mean, it's going to stay that way for for a while. But even at uh, at four months old, I mean, this is this is although it's cloudy, it's not as cloudy. It's, it's it just takes time. I mean, this being my very first meet, I didn't want to try using anything like uh, uh, well, I didn't want to try anything because there's really no fruit in it. I didn't so adding a pep, uh, peptic enzyme for something that might not have any pectin in it uh, didn't seem to make sense. So this one is kind of like, let's see what happens. And let's see, uh, let's see how it goes at the end. I mean, if it stays cloudy, then it stays cloudy. I'm not going to sweat it out. Uh, wines, I pretty much want to want to uh, clear. I know my peach wine, it still had haze. I mean, there's some wines that even with pet enzyme are going to have a haze to it. I mean, that's just the way it is. But again, all I can say is this being my first need number one, <laughs> uh, this one still has a fair amount of haze to it. So you just got to give it time. Three, uh, three months is just not a, not enough time. Uh, let's see. Let me do something real quick. Okay. Checking audio levels here. Get back to there. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. T-shirt help desk. Hey, Charles. Hey. Uh, John Fergie. Cold crashing. Cold crashing. Uh, for those who don't are not in the know, basically you're putting your wine when you think it's kind of done uh, in the refrigerator for several days. Um in which time the uh, 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 sediment is supposed to uh, filter down because of a cold environment. Uh, there's not enough. There's no, no. There's no thermal convection going on inside the bottle, so it kind of chills it down to the point where uh, some of the sediment settles out. I mean, that is a way of doing it. If you want to leave it in the refrigerator long enough, but it has to be like really cold. Uh, I noticed that there are different sized corks. What do you recommend? Depends on the. Uh, uh, I didn't bring any wine bottles. It depends on the opening of your wine bottles. Uh, I think I'm using, I have to check my Amazon to find out which one that I'm using, uh, what size corks that I'm using. I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, I will I will see what I'm, what I'm getting off Amazon and I'll, I'll, I'll add that in the uh, uh, comment section on the video uh, once the probably come in a day or so, but I don't know off the top of my head what number of cork I'm using. I don't know if it's a seven or or an eight. I'm I don't I don't know for sure. Um it's the same way with uh, corks for your carboys. I mean they're different size uh, uh bungs of these as well. Uh let's see. Oh in terms of what I would recommend well in terms of size I, I can't tell you. Again it depends on the opening of your uh, of your wine bottle. And there are variations in terms of that opening in wine bottles. Um, uh, in terms of the type of corks, I actually did that uh, an, uh, analysis with my, um, uh, when I did the video, cork cap, corking, capping, labeling. <laughs> I think that was the name of it. Uh, where I talked about uh, natural versus uh, artificial corks um, for using with wine bottles. Uh, da, 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 da. Julie, uh, are your carboys four liter? Ga yes, they are. <laughs> they are four liter, ga four liter Galarazzi wine bottles. I usually, <laughs> I don't want to disparage the product, so I'll simply say, uh, uh, when I can afford it, I'll get one, I'll try and get one a month. Or one one every once every other month. <laughs> uh, usually, it's the uh, sweet red is the one that I can tolerate the, the most <laughs> in terms of content. But after that, the bottles are all good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but four liter uh, uh, Rossi bottles, yes, they are. Um, so do, 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 I was noticing the bottle. Yep. Yeah, well, that's the ones I'm getting. Uh, Again, I think I'm paying something like uh, $14.95 for a four liter bottle. Uh, on Amazon, you're looking at about $12 in change for a one gallon bottle. Uh, so you're actually getting more, 
for, uh, for in the four liter bottles. Chocolate Rose, 34. I just wanted to let you know that I've seen the tip on laminating labels for your fermenting jars. Seen the tip on laminate. I'm not quite sure. Are you referring to uh, using the uh, the uh, templates that come with the uh, uh, Canvas website that I'm using, or or there are there are others, but uh, yeah, it's it's I'm not sure about that. Michael, you may want to you may want an airlock on that jug. Small tip that worked. Drill. I, I I'm not going. Yes, I am. I'm going to get up. Just, just, just to prove a point on your question, Michael. Which is how I first started out when I first started out making my wine, uh, making wines, managed to get some airlocks. And yes, you do drill a hole in your cap, see a little on both ends, <laughs> you insert your airlock, and it works just as well as these. I only got one of these left because I, once I started getting uh, more carboys and, and bungs, then I took them out and started using them in here, but I kept one. Uh, because it's just there are times when I'm making, in this case, uh, apple wine, where I just really don't want to, you know, go through the hassle or might not have a carboy available. So yeah, this works out quite well. This wine is started this one last month, last month, uh, December fifth. So this is going on two months old, and yeah, it's uh, it's getting clear even at two months. That's what I like about apple wine. There's sediment on the bottom, but again, there's no rush on this one. But yeah, this is what uh, this is what Michael is referring to. <clears throat> Let's see, uh, I was thinking about buying those bottles, ten dollars, which is probably closer to what I would want to pay for those things. Uh, is this an? Ex yeah, well, I don't, I don't know if it's just because of the area uh, here. If they're more expensive or not, I know this side of town might be who might might be more expensive. Um, but yeah, ten dollars if you can get these for ten, go for it. Um, does the amount of water you add affect the taste? Well, of course, you're watering down anything. If you can afford, if you can use, um, if you can, uh, when when I rack this into another container and to eliminate this headspace. Uh, given the choice between using water or juice, uh, I'd much rather use water uh, to keep the taste up uh, without without watering it down. There are some wines, especially some fruit wines, that uh, have a very light taste to them uh, to begin with, especially if you're using the uh, minimum amount of fruit, which in most cases is about three, uh, three pounds of fruit per gallon. Uh, a lot of the wines that I was doing initially using three pounds of fruit, some of them... A number of them just simply have a very light taste of the fruit. Uh, now I use four pounds. Uh, it's between three to five pounds, so I now use four pounds because at least the channel can now <laughs> afford to buy a little bit more fruit uh, uh, to give it more flavor. But yeah, given a choice between adding juice or adding uh, adding water, I'd much rather add juice uh, to bring the level up. Uh, Melody, uh, have you gotten any glass gallon jugs of fruit. Well, I, I, I have one. Uh, it was a uh, cider jug uh, that was actually given to me uh, that I do use. In fact, usually by the time you've racked your uh, four liter uh, jug once or twice, you usually have about a gallon of a gallon of actual uh, wine left. Uh, so if you rack that into a one gallon container, it kind of fills it up to the top. Um, so that helps out quite a bit. Uh, let's see. Uh, have you got any uh, those? Made? Yep, and uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but again, if you don't have one gallon jugs, one gallon glass jugs, one gallon plastic jugs will also work. 
<laughs> John. Uh, chocolate rolls, eliminated labels to keep track reusable. Uh, no, not really. I mean, for me, use this as an example. I mean, um, simple masking tape works just fine, quite honestly. I mean, because you're going to be changing them. I mean, yeah, you are going to change them every, well, most, you're going to change the, at least the, actually, not even these. Um, as an example, uh, every time I rack it, I usually put in a last rack and then the date and then the uh, 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 hydrometer reading of, of, of at that particular time, just to let me know how things are going. But no, just a simple masking tape for me works just fine. Um, it's cheap. I mean, it doesn't really cost very much of anything. Uh, da, 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 da. Laminated labels. Tron. Uh, you are the mother lover. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm just a guy who just want, who just wanted to see if he can make wine. Uh, and only did that. I mentioned this before earlier. Well, not in this video, but I mentioned before that uh, uh, my father tried making wine decades ago, many many years ago. And uh, I remembered that and decided to give it a try myself. These were kit wines. Mine were just uh, straight, the way you see me making my wines now, just to see if I could do it. Uh, and once I realized that uh, after a couple of weeks, I can make something that technically was wine, but <laughs> I wouldn't drink today because <laughs> I know better. Uh, yeah, <laughs> anyway. Um, keep the vids coming. I appreciate you, sir. Thank you. Well, thank you, John. Uh, T-shirt help desk. Uh, can you do a video on how you? I did that already. In fact, that was uh, not my last video, but my video before last. It was more uh, focused on uh, sanitizing uh, wine bottles, but you can extrapolate that into doing uh, carboys and uh, and uh, and your equipment as well. Uh, I just wanted to keep it simple by just simply focusing in on. Well, no, you cannot put plastic in the oven for that one procedure but no I already did that video I want to check my, my, my video listings um, and you'll see that one as well <clears throat> I mean I'm looking at this question again like primary fermenters yeah carboys yeah the airlocks and the hydrometer uh, quite honestly I mean in terms of sanitizing the easiest way of doing that is just simply using Simply using star sands, quite honestly. Uh, usually at the end of uh, uh, each usage, uh, I'll just go ahead and rinse it out with star sands, uh, especially through the hydrometer, and uh, call it a day. Put it back in its, uh, put the hydrometer back in its, uh, its casing. Same thing for the tube. In fact, I'm going to do it now before something happens. Put it back in its, its original ca uh, case, and that's it. Let's see, any other questions? Am I doing this? Don't need that. Don't. I have to label this, by the way. I'm not going to do it now, but basically, uh, just labeling it to say what it was that I'm making, in which case, pure wine, uh, the date that I started making it, so I'll know how old the wine is at any given point, and the original gravity reading, so I'll know uh, uh, at the end when I do the final gravity reading, and certainly when I do subsequent rack, uh, readings during rackings, uh, just how the wine is progressing to let me know if I've got a stuck fermentation or at the very end just how much uh, uh, alcohol uh, was produced by the wine. Uh, let's see. not as messy as it was okay okay folks uh, going on uh, 834 here uh, it's getting kind of late did not plan on doing an hour and a half long uh, uh, video but as long as the questions kept coming I don't mind mind keeping uh, keeping up the answers uh, speaking of which uh, do you add an airlock during primary fermentation yes 
And notice that sometimes there's no airlock. The only time you don't see me using an airlock, and yeah, the only time you don't see me using an airlock is when I'm uh, demonstrating the fact that you can, now this will work, during primary fermentation is when I, 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 I make mention of the fact that as long as you do a couple of things, one, uh, you don't put the airlock on tight, but you leave it on loosely so that uh, CO2 can come out so you don't have to worry about uh, exploding or, or your, your container blowing up. Uh, or if it is on too tight, at least uh, every other two or three days, just come in, just loosen it up just to check it to make sure that there's no buildup of CO2 uh, in there. But uh, yeah, uh, during secondary fermentation or during the latter stages of secondary fermentation, uh, yeah, I don't mind using using a cap and just putting it on there. Uh, not tight, but well, it is tight because <laughs> I'm no longer worrying about CO2 being produced. I mean, I'll, I'll still check it when I check the rest of them, but yeah, I, I don't mind not using an airlock uh, uh, during secondary. During primary, I generally, of course, we use an airlock because I now have enough of them. I still need three more, but I have enough of them where, uh, yeah, it lets me know the activity of what's happening inside the bottle, whether they're still uh, producing CO2. Uh, but again, if you don't have it, if you don't have an airlock, you're just starting out, I've already described, just put your cap on kind of loosely so that CO2 can get out and just check it every few days or so just to make sure that it's not on there too tight and you should be able to get away with, uh, with uh, doing it that way. Mm. Well, the analytics, analytics here are saying that there are still 18 of you still there. Uh, if there are 18 of you with questions, then we can go ahead and press on. Uh, if not, then we can uh, start thinking about wrapping this up. No, I have not done one on degassing. Uh, it is one that I'm planning on doing. Uh, it's probably the only step, uh, procedural step that I've not done, and the only reason why I have not done it uh, is because I'm, I'm, I'm looking at ordering a new degassing wand uh, so that I can do a proper job of it. Uh, the way that I'm currently degassing since uh, at six months, seven months, uh, there's still a, a fair amount of uh, uh, CO2 gas still present in the wine that still hasn't been released yet. Uh, the method that I am doing uh, for degassing, I probably wouldn't recommend uh, to the people watching my channel. I mean, it works, but uh, I'm going to wait till I've got a proper degassing wine so I can do a proper video on how to degas your uh, uh, degas your wine. Um, but yeah, that's the only one that I haven't done uh, as a, as a standalone video. All right. I have to be mindful of the fact that there is a, a 20 second delay uh, between what I say and, and, and what shows up on the screen. So uh, if you see me like pausing uh, before I say anything else, like it's time to wrap this up, uh, it's because of the, that, that built in YouTube delay. Uh, but again, like I said, if there are no further questions, then uh, after an hour and 38 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this. <laughs> See, this is what I mean. Now I'm seeing uh, the two additional questions that just popped up. Uh, T-shirt help desk. Okay, thanks, Charles. You appreciate the channel and video. Have a great night. Thank you very much. How many times do you rack per gallon? Miguel? Uh, it depends. On average, I would say probably four times you yeah usually about four maybe rarely I will do it five times per gallon uh, there's the initial rack from primary and secondary and usually three racks of occurring after that and they're usually spaced between uh, ooh, between four to six weeks apart depending on how much uh, sediment there may be on the bottom or how clear the wine might happen to be uh, before bottling uh, but yeah, usually four is about the average. Uh, what type of pair 
did you use? Uh, Perry, uh, when doing live streams, I don't use fresh fruit because of time involved. No, not that one. Yeah, I'll use that one. I use, I'll use. i usually use uh, bottle juice. So this is just 100% uh, pear juice. Uh, check to make sure that there was no preservatives. Uh, it's just 100% juice. Uh, and that's, that's what I'm using. Okay, Connie, thank you. Got to run. You and me both. <laughs> Good night. Thank you. Uh, and I will give this one last minute for any straight questions, and then we're going to wrap this up. Well, we're going to wrap up the video. I still got to clean up this, <laughs> clean up this area, take, take all of this equipment down, put my computer back, <laughs> and all of that. <laughs> all right. Well, folks, in that case, I will say good night, and we'll see you next month uh, for the next live stream video again. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please click on that subscribe button. If you are not a member, appreciate it if you will join. Uh, donations, of course, are always accepted. Um, and with that, good night.